be acceptable to you, the Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So this morning we have Joseph's part of the dream or the angel sequences that gives us the story of the birth of Jesus, right? This is the only story in Matthew that actually foretells the coming of Jesus, right? In chapter 2, which we'll hear on January 6th, talks about the story of Epiphany, when the wise men come and visit. But this is the dream that Joseph has after Mary has had her conversation with him, saying that she is pregnant. Now Mary is betrothed to Joseph and is supposedly a virgin. So she shouldn't be with child. So you can only imagine what that conversation was like. But Joseph, being a, it tells us in our story that Joseph is a righteous man. And he wants to take care of Mary, even though he doesn't think at this point he can marry her. Right? So he wants to divorce her quietly. Because if he had made a public notice of this, what would have happened? Mary would have been stoned to death. That's the law. But Joseph didn't want that to happen. So Joseph said, I'm going to divorce you. But we're going to do this quietly. Actually, he probably said, I have to think about this for a while. And I needed some time. So he went and he did his thing. And he had a dream. We had a conversation on Wednesday morning as we studied this with the adult Bible study. And the question was, what if Joseph didn't remember his dream? Right? We have dreams all the time. Do you remember all your dreams? No. Well, this was a special dream, so God made sure that Joseph remembered it. But in his dream, the angel said to Joseph, Joseph, don't be worried about what's, what's going on with Mary, because I have taken care of all of this. And all I need for you to do is to marry Mary. Marry Mary. And raise this child. And you have to name him Jesus. That's a, one of the most interesting things to me in this, in this passage of Scripture is the angel comes to Joseph and says, Mary has a child that is conceived of the Holy Spirit, and, and the child will be born, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people. And then this is done so because the prophet said that there would be a child who would be born, and his name would be Jesus. Emmanuel, not Jesus. All right. So you're supposed to name him Jesus because a kid's going to be born who's going to be named Emmanuel. It's like, I'm going to name my kid Paul because I told my, my grandmother I was going to name my kid Peter. Perfect sense, right? Actually, it does make perfect sense. And we have to look at that, that passage, though, from, a man, from Isaiah to completely understand it. That passage from Isaiah is Isaiah chapter 7. Where Isaiah is in the king is in the king's court, King Ahaz, um, bless you, and the king is under siege, and he's wondering how this is ever going to be taken care of. Is God going to be here to take care of us? And Isaiah tells Ahaz that God has said you need to ask for a sign, and Ahaz wouldn't. And finally, Isaiah said, "Fine, since you're not going to ask, here's the sign. There's this woman. She's going to conceive a, a son." And she's going to give birth. And his name is going to be Emmanuel. And before, this, before he can eat by himself, the siege of your city is going to be taken care of. Right? This is about 750 B.C. So if this is only a prophecy about Jesus, what Isaiah is saying to King Ahaz is, hold on for 800 years and everything will be fine. Does that sound good? No, not really. So what happened is, we assume, actually it says in chapter 8 of, of Isaiah, if you want to go read that, what happened and who was born. It talks about the birth of Emmanuel, right? And that's not Emmanuel being Jesus, that's Emmanuel being the child that was born then to take care of the siege that Ahaz was under, because the siege did go away after Emmanuel was born. But here's the thing that's important for us to see in these lessons this morning. Jesus means what? Say by no. Say loud. God saves. The Lord saves. 
Jesus means the Lord saves. And, G and the angel came to Joseph and said, I need for you to name this child Jesus because he's going to do what? He's going to save his people. And he's coming to save his people in a fulfillment of a prophecy that got King Ahaz out of being under siege. But he's coming to fulfill that prophecy in a whole new way. To completely set all of his people free. Because he's coming to be Emmanuel. And Emmanuel is, means, God is with us. It's important that you put that is in there. Emmanuel is not just God with us. Emmanuel is God is with us. It's a present tense verb. God is here right now. God is always with you. And this is important to remember because the situation that Joseph was in. Right? Joseph was engaged to be married to a woman who was supposed to be not with child, who now is with child. And now he has to get, divorce her or do something and, and stay up with this. And this is not a situation that he wants to find himself in. But the angel comes to him and says, I know where you're at and I know what's happening. And I know how bad your life is at this point in time. But do you know what? I'm with you. And you can handle this. No matter what you're facing. No matter what's going on. No matter what mountains or valleys you think are in front of you. How much darkness you seem to be standing in. God is with you. And that's the promise of the birth of a baby in a manger. That's the promise we hear year after year on Christmas Eve that Mary bore a son and named him Jesus because he came to save his people. And it fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah saying that the child is going to be born and he is going to be Emmanuel because he is the embodiment of God with us. He is God with us. That is the promise that we have. That is the love and the joy, and the hope, and the peace that we have in this season. Because we can hold tight to the guarantee that God has told us as he told Joseph. Jesus came to save you, and God is always with you. So hold tight to that, and know that that promise will always come true.